hello everyone welcome to this video so let's continue with the proof for part b of this particular theorem so here we wanted to prove that the projection p that projects all of the given hilbert space onto this space right so here we determine what is the projection of h right what is p of h so first of all again we assume that m is less than n if that is so because the sequence is monotone we have pm related with pn so pm less than equal to pn so we could write this difference here pn minus pm so this is greater than equal to the zero operator right so we can call pn minus pm to be a positive operator if this is a positive operator so according to the definition the inner product here is greater than zero this inner product is greater than zero right that we already know so if we let n tending to infinity what do we have the sequence p n x so you could open up this bracket so you could write the inner product of p n x minus p m x comma with x right so this inner product uh, p n x would be written as p of x why because we are tending n towards infinity so according to the continuity of inner product we have p minus p m here so that means this is greater than equal to zero if this is greater than equal to zero that means p minus p m is a positive operator if this is a positive operator so that means p m is less than equal to the operator p here right if this is so again using the result here if two operators they if the two projection operators if they are related with each other so the spaces all are also related with each other y1 and y2 where what is y1 y1 is p1 h1 and y2 is p2 h2 so here pm is related with p so that means pmh is contained in p of h right for every m because we have considered m to be in some arbitrary member so this thing is true for every h if now all the spaces all the image spaces they are contained in p of h so that means their union also belongs to the space p of h right so let's mark this as equation number 2 so we are saying this union is present in p of h now what we are required to prove we are required to prove the opposite that p of h is contained in this union right so uh, also for every m and for every subscript m and for every element x which is a member of this hilbert space we can write pmx contained in the hilbert space because this h is taken from the hilbert space h right and every pmx that is contained in the union obviously right so we are saying pmx is contained in this union and moreover this pmx converges to p of x whenever m goes to infinity right so therefore px is contained in the closure of this union according to the result that we know whenever m as uh, m is any non empty subset of a metric space and m bar beats closure then an element would belong to the closure of that particular set if and only if there is some sequence xn in m such that this xn converges to x so using this result now because we have a sequence pmx which converges to p of x so that means this p of x the this li particular limit would belong to the closure of this particular set right so we have uh, px contained in the closure of the union of pmh according to this result so if that is so because x was some arbitrary element taken from the hilbert space h so that means p of h would be contained in this union right so we have equation 3 p of h contained in the closure of the union of pmh so using equation 2 and 3 equation 2 tells us that this union is contained in p of h and 3 tells us that p of h is contained in the closure of this union so together we have the union of pmh contained in ph and this ph contained in this union uh, closure right so according to this we have this result and moreover 
here we want it because we wanted to make this equality so let's see what do we have here we have the following result it tells us that for a closed subspace y of a hilbert space h the orthogonal complement y complement that is the null space of the orthogonal projection of p or of h onto y so basically it this theorem this result tells us that this complement is nothing but the null space so you could write p of h as the null space of i minus p the co uh, conjugate of or the projection operator p right so this is a closed space because you know the null space of a bounded linear operator is, is always closed why because this ph is now nothing but this null space and being a null space it is closed and moreover it is a null space of a bounded and linear operator so that is why it is closed so if this is closed so we could say that uh, this thing is equal to the union of pmh right where m varies from 1 to infinity only so this closure and they are equal why because they are uh, now a closed part of a closed space so therefore we have a result b here so now let's move on to the part c the proof for part c so here we wanted to prove that the null space for this limit projection that is nothing but the intersection of the all of the other null spaces of the given sequence for that we again see that this complement is nothing but the null space for the projection operator p as i have just told you if that is so so that means you could write the null space as the complement of the projection operator p of h right so this you know this projection operator p of h is contained in p n of h for every n right so you could write the complement here why because p of h contains all of this p n h right using the above result so using this fact here you could write that your null space is contained in the intersection of p n h right that is contained in the intersection of p n h and what is this thing this is nothing but if you perform the complement of all the intersections this uh, i'm sorry here it should be union yes so here you have the union p n h right so when you perform this uh, com uh, when you perform the complement of this union it would transform to intersection using de morgan's law that you, are, you might have studied in this set theory so this uh, you could write this to be intersection of the null space of p n and moreover you have x as a member of the intersection of the null space of pn so you have one part here that this np is contained in this intersection now we wanted to prove that this intersection is contained in n of p so we take one element x from this intersection and we prove that this x is also a member of this n of p right so here x because it is present in the intersection so it would be present in every each of the null space for every n right being or uh, the obvious property for intersection now because this x is a member of the null space for every n so that means p n x would be equal to 0 for every n right this thing is also true for every n and moreover this p n x converges to p of x so if this p n x is 0 so that means p x is also 0 because p n x is converging to p of x so if this p x is 0 so that means x would belong to the null space of n of p now because we have selected this x as some arbitrary element from this intersection space so that means this intersection space the intersection null space is contained in the null space for the projection operator p so using this result here right using this result here and using this result here we have the equality of two null spaces so the null space for the projection operator p is equal to the intersection of the null space for all the projection operators so this is the proof for this theorem so i hope you understood this theorem well well that is it for this video thank you for watching